Nikola Jokic is making the case for his second straight MVP trophy, but the best big man in the NBA is shockingly getting solid contributions from the rookie Bones Highland and the sophomore Zeke Naji. We'll break down Jokic's once-in-a-lifetime type dominance that everyone takes for granted, but both Highland and Naji were late first-rounders who President Tim Connolly selected over the past two years who are now looking like draft steals. Since December 26th, the Joker-led Nugs have the fifth best record in the association at 6-3, and, and considering the mile high is the number six seed in the West, even while dealing with the Blue Arrow Jamal Murray's ongoing ACL recovery, this squad has more than lived up to expectations midway through 21-22. So stay tuned to see if Nikola has any shot at winning back-to-back -back MVPs, and to see how the Denver Nuggets' unknown talent around Jokic is keeping them alive. Before continuing, only 11.4% of you watching right now are subscribed, so if you haven't already, please subscribe. Also leave a thumbs up, it takes a few seconds and makes a massive difference. You can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at dflowhoops and I'll follow you back. Links in the description for both those platforms. It's been quite some time since we've talked about the team located one mile above sea level, as while Nikola Jokic has been mentioned periodically on rankings or lists I've made, I haven't made a Nuggets video in particular since April 4th of 2021, where I argued they were officially top contenders eight days before Jamal Murray tore his ACL. I also made a video titled The Truth About Nikola Jokic from April 22nd of last year, but this is only the seventh time I've posted on the Mile High City. Having said that, two of those videos were posted in the first year of this channel back in 2018, where I barely posted, now I post every day, but I guess you could say I have a dated history of breaking down the exciting Jokic and Murray-led Nuggets. Of course, they don't have Jamal Murray or Porter Jr., but if the Nuggets can keep up the type of winning they've been doing as of late, I'll have to keep posting more videos on this squad, because Denver is a team like many others that aren't the Lakers, Knicks, or Warriors, that fails to get its fair share of attention in the mainstream media or even amongst NBA YouTubers. But you can't forget, even though they were playing in an empty arena, that the Denver Nuggets, like the Miami Heat who I broke down yesterday, came up three wins short of beating the eventual champion LA Lakers in the bubble playoffs, as the Nuggets made the West Finals in 2020. Murray and Jokic have fueled this team to at least the conference semifinals in each of the last three seasons, and we can't fully take into account their second round exit to Phoenix where they were swept in 2021, considering they didn't have a man who averaged 27 points per game in the playoffs from a year earlier in the Blue Arrow. But due to the lack of attention that Denver receives, two of the team's inexperienced yet young, energetic, and improving players in the Rook Bones Highland and the second year man out of Arizona in Zeke Naji have flown completely under the radar to the point where casual fans, even diehard fans of other teams, have no idea who these guys are. We'll get to those two later on, but since the Nuggets get no respect, we have to give some to the veteran cast of this team, keeping Denver somewhat relevant in the NBA universe right now. Don't dismay the force in which the Serbian beast at center in the 26-year-old three-time All-Star, two-time All-NBA player, and reigning MVP in Nikola Jokic can inflict on defenses when he finds a shooter or three that can find a rhythm. Over the course of playoff series that Jokic has been successful in in the past, opposing coaches making adjustments to stop his all-time great passing get mercilessly hit with Sambor shuffles, and those doubling him to stop those Sambor shuffles are met with jumbo Steve Nash-esque passes from the post. In 2021, Joker had one of the all-time best years we've ever seen, posting 26.4 points, 10.8 rebounds, and 8.3 assists per game. Nikola became one of three players ever to average at least 25 points, 10 rebounds, and 8 assists in a season, joining Oscar Robertson and Russell Westbrook. The generationally great center also surpassed 50 triple-doubles throughout his career, which had never been done by a center since Wilt Chamberlain, but Jokic accomplished it in 287 fewer games. Additionally, as a part of the most unique season in NBA history, the Joker fully sustained the grind playing in every single game. While the usual 82-game schedule was condensed by 10, only 11 out of 540 players were able to play in all 72. Jokic became the first MVP since Kobe's 2008 season to play in every single game. His numbers on paper were exceptional, but the biggest impact Jokic had was the fact that he revived the big man position. He was the first center in 18 years to win MVP, 
and arguably the most influential center to ever do it. Assumably one of Nicola's idols growing up, Shaquille O'Neal, said it best on Jokic, saying to him, quote, Because of you, the big man is back. After taking home his first MVP trophy in 2021, now in 2022, Jokic's encore has somehow been even more intriguing. So I know he's 0.9 points per game off his total from last year, but this season, it's the efficiency from the Serbian beast that's been unmatched. He attempts 17.7 field goals per game, and for players taking over 17 attempts, the reigning most valuable player is making the best field goal percentage at 56.1%. The next closest number is Giannis, and he's two percentage points lower at 54.1% with the same amount of shot attempts. But don't forget how many of Nikola's shots come on jumpers from 10 to 25-ish feet, which makes that efficiency even more impressive. To be fair, Nikola's points and assists are slightly lower than 2021, but his averages so far this season are still peerless. Exactly zero other players in NBA history have ever eclipsed his current numbers of 25 plus points, 13 plus boards, and 6 plus dimes. Don't forget, Jokic's rebounding averages are up by nearly 4 points. He currently ranks second in rebounding, with 14 of them per game, 1.1 behind Rudy Gobert of the Utah Jazz. The stats prove Nikola Jokic is the NBA's most efficient scorer. He's also a top two rebounder, not to mention the best passing big ever. So the argument for Nikola being the favorite to win his second straight MVP is a solid one. And this next bit of information further proves that Jokic's player efficiency rating in 21-22 is the best the game's ever seen by a long shot. For non-stat junkies, player efficiency rating, aka PER, measures a player's efficiency per minute. It calculates all positive accomplishments from points, dimes, rebounds, and steals, while also negative aspects like missed shots, fouls, and turnovers. For example, in Wilt Chamberlain's 1962-63 season, he averaged 44.8 points per game and 24.3 rebounds on 52.8% shooting from the floor. Of course, that stat line is never going to be matched, but through the lens of PER, Jokic is having a better season. Nikola's 32.1 PER this season outmatches Chamberlain's 31.8. No player in NBA history has surpassed 32 PER for a whole season, but to be fair, Giannis's total this season is right behind him at 31.88. But up to this point, the game of basketball has never witnessed such an efficient force as the Joker. His player efficiency numbers display that he's not necessarily having the best season of all time, but the most efficient one. You also have to consider that Denver is missing two of their max contract players. When Jamal Murray's on the floor, he and Jokic have one of the deadliest pick and roll combinations in basketball. Likewise, Michael Porter Jr. gives Jokic an elite deep range threat when the paint condenses. Nikola's missing two of his most trusted offensive players on the team, yet Denver's still been successful. When the Serbian's gracing the floor, Denver has a 112.8 offensive rating, which would make Denver the second best offense in the NBA if they obtain that number as a team. Nikola also has a 104 defensive rating when he's on the court, which would place Denver as the second best unit defensively in the league as well. Stats don't paint the entire picture, I'm aware of that, but it's clear the Nuggets are an elite team on both ends of the floor when Jokic is on the court. For transparency, running those same on-slash-off-court numbers for the top stars in our game like Kevin Durant, Giannis Dettacumpo, and Stephen Curry, and you'll find similar or slightly better numbers. But I think context matters here because Jokic is doing more with less. The Bucks have three players averaging 18 plus points per game, along with Bobby Portis, who has 15.4 points per game. Meanwhile, for the Nets, Kyrie continues to play strictly road games, but Brooklyn has three of the game's best talents, along with elite shooters like Patty Mills and Joe Harris. Finally, Golden State has four players averaging 17 plus points per game, combined with a perennial DPOY candidate in Draymond. Aside from Jokic, the Nuggets have one player averaging 15 plus points, which is Will the Thrill Barton, but Jokic certainly carries Denver, leading the team in points, rebounds, assists, steals, and blocks. There's only five players in the history of the game to accomplish that for a whole year. Whether he takes home back-to-back -back MVPs or not, Ultimately, we're witnessing one of the game's best and most unique talents to grace the NBA stage. The Joker's a true unicorn in the sense that he'll revolutionize the game of basketball in a similar way Curry did with his deep-range bombs. The man's brought the value of the big man back and introduced a new way to think about the center position. 
Sadly, Jokic likely won't receive the credit and status he really deserves without a championship ring, but a second MVP in back-to-back -back fashion would engrave his name as a true legend and basketball pioneer. In terms of the talent around Jokic without Murray and Michael Porter Jr., it may not be a group filled with star caliber players. The briefly mentioned Will Barton, along with the shifty playmaking veteran guard in Monte Morris, Uncle Jeff Green, and the former dunk contest runner-up in Aaron Gordon combined for a decent 52 and a half points between the four of them. Don't forget about the point god Facundo Campazzo's dime dropping. The Argentinian averages four assists per game off the pine. It's a veteran cast of Nuggets that have had to step up into bigger roles without MPJ and Jamal. And considering the team's currently two plus games over 500, they've done a solid job. But it's the productivity from two recently turned 21 year olds for Denver that's been most noteworthy. The Nuggets bench has performed remarkably better when it's featured either or both of Highland and Najee in the lineup. Denver's bench has a culminative plus minus of minus 56 when neither Highland or Najee play at least five minutes, but are well in the plus when one or both are in the game. The 22nd overall pick from the 2020 draft, Zeke Naji, has contributed nicely in the 24 outings he suited up for coach Mike Malone. Najee's making 48% of his two three-point attempts per game, not only has Zeke increased his deep range efficiency by 8 percentage points as a sophomore, but Najee's also doubling his points per game from 3 to 6 in year 2 of his career. The perfect stretch big man for the modern NBA, right off the bat after he was given the opportunity in the rotation consistently, Zeke's proved to be an absolute sniper from beyond the three-point line. The Arizona alum also has a soft touch on the inside and solid lateral quickness and length defensively with a 7'1 wingspan. Another diamond in the rough for the Nugs, Busy Bones Highland has lit it up in the mile high to heights the majority of general managers didn't expect. Proving to be one of the steals of the 2021 draft class last summer, Bones had to hear 25 other names called by Adam Silver before he was selected by Denver. After spending two years at Virginia Commonwealth University, aka VSU, Bones would take off in his second year with the Rams, averaging 19 points per game as a sophomore. Despite the flashy shot manufacturing he showed off at the NCAA level, there were still many questions as to whether or not his slight 6'3", 170-pound frame could adjust to the physicality of the pro level. But a few months later, and now the only questions are whether or not the NBA game can adjust to Highland's speed. In the mile high, Bones has been somewhat struggling with his shooting, making only 36 and 33 of his field goal and three-point shots respectively. However, it's the active, laterally quick perimeter defense, the speed and tight handles on the other end that make Bones a prospect to keep an eye on. Highland's averaging a rookie 12th best 8.1 points per game in only 16 minutes per night. Last night in Denver's win over the Blazers, Highland did foul out, but he contributed 17 points, making 5 for 8 of his triples, and he was also a game-high plus 24. Other than Jokic, what most impresses you about the Nuggets? Best answer down below in the comments earns next video shout out. The top five commenters with the most shout outs by March 21st receive NBA merchandise of their choosing this spring. So leave your take on today's question to compete in Community Speaks. Today's Speaks winner is Heat Superfan who says the Heat can keep dominating without Jimmy and Bam through the dominant coaching of Spo. The Heat signed a lot of defensive versatility this offseason and it shows you they're still able to win games on off shooting nights. I hope you have a great one. DFlow signing off.